Hi everybody, we have a Labradoodle puppy litter update video for you. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Labradoodles and this is the week one update for the mini Labradoodle puppies from our Olay litter. This is our litter with Noisette and with Eli. And in today's video, we're going to give you an update on all of the puppies, tell you what their new weights are, give you a little bit of an update on Noisette and tell you what we've been doing with the puppies over the past week. So you may hear in the background a little bit of talking and uh, not human talking. That's Orca. Orca is here and she's due to have puppies in just three days and she's just outside of the maternity ward and while we're filming the door to the each room is open so she can see through the glass doors. So she's having a conversation telling us, hmm, you're not here checking on me. So you may hear her in the background a bit. Now for our little mama Labradoodle Noisette here. Oh my goodness, she is a tiny little thing. She is just doing a spectacular job at being a mama Labradoodle for these six mini Labradoodle puppies. Six puppies for a little girl who only weighs around 14 pounds is a lot of family to look after. But Noisette's handling it easily. She's relaxed, she's calm, she has no problems with feeding them all. They're all doing beautifully. You can see their coats are all gleaming and shining. Noisette's eating really well. Um, actually, last night she was quite funny. Her bowl was empty and she decided it was time for a refill. And uh, Reynolds and I were sitting watching TV and we could hear this. It sounded like bells. And we couldn't quite figure out what it was. But it was uh, Mama Labradoodle Noisette. And she was clanking away on her dish. She was banging on it with her feet. She'd figured out how to get it to bang onto her water dish so that it was making a, a clanging really bell type sound to say, hey, come on, time to feed me some more. So it was really quite funny. Uh, but Noisette is eating on her own. <coughs> There's no need for us to hand feed her or entice her. She eats everything. The one thing she does do is tend to leave some of her vegetables behind. So one of the things she has is a dehydrated food, which she's fed in the morning. And uh, in her dish quite often, she leaves out the bits of the pumpkin and a few bits of the carrots. She likes the sardines, she likes the blueberries, she likes the protein. Uh, she does all that quite well, but she quite often uh, spits some of those vegetables out but that's okay because we make up for that by that's her breakfast and that food is not compressed it each individual in, ingredient is separate so that the dog actually can choose not to eat something so but for her other meals we use a compressed freeze-dried puck and that has everything ground together and then pressed into a, a puck shape uh, and that way the dog can't spit anything out so we know that there's a hundred percent complete nutrition going into her body from those and then the other thing she has is regular frozen uh, raw food and again that is a product that is 100 percent complete and balanced so what she eats is uh, frozen raw from Stella and Chewy's uh, or Steve's. Those are the two products we use that are complete and 100% balanced. And then thrown in there from time to time, I often also give her some canned puppy food. Normally we don't feed our dogs any sort of processed foods uh, such as a, a canned food product or a kibble product, but when they are lactating and when they tend to eat more, we will put some of that out and leave it out because we can leave it out for longer and they can have more. It also the canned food we use is uh, it's a post-surgery product and it's very palatable but it's also extremely high calorie so it's a lot of nutrition that's going out of Noisette and if you just look at these hungry mouths here I mean you can see how these guys really go at it at the milk bar they're tiny little labradoodles but they are robust and they are really uh, taking everything out of mom here and you can see these are Noisette's lungs 
her ribs and then you can see she's quite svelte she has a definite waist there's no extra weight on the girl she's in beautiful condition but what we want to do is make sure that she's always remains in top condition so there's no stress on her body so when she's finished with this litter she will be in exactly the same prime condition that she was before she had the puppies so that includes perfect coat no shedding no dullness no loss of hair perfect weight she's not going to be overweight or underweight everything stays good for her to keep her in prime condition because of course that is our goal that both the puppies and our mommy labradoodles all stay in really good condition so no matter what you're feeding, it's really important that you, you do that accommodation and you figure out just exactly what you need to do to make sure that your dog enjoys their meals, has variety, but that they are getting all that nutrition right in them. So if they do tend to spit something out or they don't like something, you have to adjust and make sure that they do get everything. Uh, the other thing that the dogs eat are bones. They all have uh, three or four chicken necks every day while they're, they're lactating. Uh, that gives them a, a nice little boost of calcium without upsetting their balance. And they receive no supplements. Uh, we, we have in the past supplemented, but after mm, quite a few years of doing this, we've managed to find foods now that are complete and whole and don't require supplementation. Because what seems to happen when you supplement you give them a little bit more of this, but then that throws the balance out over here and that can cause problems. So what we want to do is find a food that manages everything. So that's what's happening with Miss Mama Labradoodle Noisette. She's very happy to leave the nest now. In fact, she's asking to come out more and more. Uh, she's confident. She's not worried about her puppies. She knows when they're sleeping. She knows when it's okay for her to come out. And uh, she loves to come out. When she comes out, her entire, entire body wags. It's just the sweetest thing to watch. She's so enthusiastic. She's so loving, this little girl. And she's just like, everything is like a little wiggling s all the time with her body as she communicates to you just how delighted she is to come out and say hi and she's clearly very proud of her puppies because she her favorite thing is when someone comes and sits like this with her and just admires her beauties so we spend a lot of time in here with our moms. It's quite boring for them to be in here and just to have the puppies for company. So we do spend lots of time coming in and really all we do is just sit here and talk to her. And that's our opportunity to take some pictures for you, post them on our Facebook channel, and also just to handle the puppies. So when they're nursing like this, all we do is touch them. And this is just so they get used to being touched all over their body so they don't start when they you know or startle i guess when they feel a hand they get used to the human touch and of course while i'm doing this they can smell me so again they get used to knowing what i smell like and that when they smell me that something good is happening and that's just with a gentle touch and when we go through each of the puppies here, I'm just going to let them nurse for a bit. Uh, they just started just before we started filming, so I don't want to interrupt too much. Um, when I'm showing you the puppies, I'll show you what we do for what's called early neurological stimulation. And what that involves really is just exposing the puppies to a few seconds of something that they don't anticipate happening during the day. Uh, so it's, it's a, just a matter of putting them upside down, tilting their head around, things like that, just so it's something that they're not expecting. And so they learn that, oh, things happen that we don't anticipate and nothing bad comes of it. So that's the very first step in desensitization, getting the puppies able to accommodate stress in their lives in a positive and uh, in a manner that, that makes them really capable and more competent in dealing with changing situa situations. Now, as we go through each week, we'll talk a lot more about socialization and desensitization because this happens every day for the whole eight weeks that the puppies are here. It's very important, of course, during these eight weeks that we get the puppies off to the right start so that when they come home to you, you can continue on and you have lovely, well socialized and adjusted puppies.
So let's go through them here. I think they probably had enough that they won't be too mad at me if I go through each one. So we're going to do them in birth order. And one of the best things to, to report is that one week of age, all of these puppies have more than doubled their birth weights. Uh, Noisette may look small and it may look like her milk bar is not huge. Clearly there's lots of nutrition and value in there for the puppies because their weight gain is exactly where we'd like it to be. So the first puppy in this litter is Red Collar, who I think is hiding over here somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Are you Red Collar? Yes, you are. Okay, come on, baby. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. And Red Collar is the only male in the litter. He's the firstborn and the only boy, and he really doesn't want to come off of that nipple there. He says, no, I am not giving it up. There we go. This guy is a beautiful black and white party boy. His markings are gorgeous, very symmetrical, and I won't keep him for too long. Noisette still is not happy to have her puppies go too far from her. She's very, very devoted to them. And Mr. Red Collar Boy is weighing in at 493 grams. And there's a change in this litter. He is no longer the biggest puppy. Uh, when they were born, he was the biggest puppy, and now he is the second biggest puppy in the litter. So there, you lost your spot there, Mr. Red. Yeah, and you can see his nose is just starting to fill in. So um, where he has black fur, he's already got the, the solid black on his nose. And where he has the white fur, he still has some pink on his nose. But that will fill in over time. So now we'll see if we can get him back where his spot was so he can go back to enjoying his food here. And usually when I put them back in, they're pretty good at finding their way back to where they were. Next is Dark Blue Collar Boy, who's right here, and haha, -ha, not attached, DA. And this is our new biggest puppy in the litter. Oh, no, that's going to make it a bit easier. She says that's enough of that. I'm going to go and see if there's anything in my dish. Mr. Dark Blue Collar is this handsome, gleaming ebony with an adorable little Kentucky Fried Chicken goatee there, his little Colonel Sanders goatee. This is a nice, full-bodied puppy. You can see on all these puppies, they have gorgeous body condition, really nicely developed. It's not that they have huge, huge tummies. It's just that they're overall beautifully proportioned with just the most gleaming coats. Just lovely little puppies. And Mr. Dark Blue Collar Boy is 516 grams already. I hold he smokes in one week. That's incredible. And he was 231 to, to start off with. So 462 would be uh, doubling his birth weight. So he's uh, definitely far surpassed that. Next is Pink Collar, who just happens to be right here. Hello, my little sweet. This little girl, well, I think I was calling dark blue collar a boy. Uh, dark blue collar in our other litters are all boys. But in this one, dark blue collar is a girl. Miss Pink Collar Girl here. She's a little brown girl, little chocolate. She's probably going to be a really pretty auburn color. Because if you look at her, you can see that she's got lots of red highlights already going on. And I suspect, like her mama Noisette, that she's a sable labradoodle. Um, I was saying last week I couldn't quite tell, but I can see now that she does look, does look like she has some of the black uh, banding going through here and the ticking. So she likely is a sable. So this little girl, she is 317 grams. So she's the smallest puppy in the litter. And when she was born, she was the smallest. She keeps that position, but she has more than doubled her birth weight too. She was just 152 grams when she was born. So she's gonna be teensy just like her mama Noisette. Just a little tiny package of amazing goodness there. There you go, Miss Pink Collar Girl. And next is Yellow Collar Girl. Hey, sweetie. So you see, here's what we do. See, they're used to me touching them. So when I go to pick them up, I touch them so they're prepared. They know something's gonna happen. And here we go. This is our little apricot party girl. 
Uh, last week I said I wasn't sure she's going to be a caramel or an apricot, but you can see she has black coming in around her nose. And if you look carefully at her eye rims, you can see they're black too. So this is going to be an apricot because a black nose, black lips, and black pads mean you're an apricot, not a caramel. So we'll use Yellow Collar Girl here as an example of what we do to give them that little bit of stress. So this would be that little bit of stress where we put them upside down, we touch their tummy, and that's it. Simple as that, nothing terrible. We'll hold them upright like this, because this is not a position they're normally in. And then we will do something like this which is also not a position they're normally in. And you can see she has zero response. She's quite trusting. She's fine with it. And you know, I think this little girl's got a little half stash going on here. And you see that black under her nose on the left side of her face? Oh, I think this is gonna be one little cutie pie with some really pretty little features. Miss Yellow Collar Girl is weighing in at 451 grams. She's got the pretty, pretty party markings on her. Some of the ones on her back are starting to show up a bit now. Um, as I said last week when they were born, all of these uh, apricot markings are going to end up getting darker over time. Noisette, are you singing a song? Hey, come on, come on. Oh, is that your, it's her, Noisette's roommate who's next door. Maisie, who's uh, making a big racket there. She's figuring that uh, she should be in the video rather than Wazette. <laughs> so she's, being, she's making a whole bunch of noise there trying to jump over and see what's going on. Next is Green Collar Girl. Oh, Maisie, you're okay. It'll be your turn next. Little Green Collar Girl is a beautiful brown puppy to a lovely chocolate just like Mama Noisette. This is a very, very similar coloring to a to Noisette. Yeah, just like you, I love you. I do, I love you, thank you. <laughs> okay, nobody can see your puppy. Yeah, let's show the puppy. Look at how you look, that puppy looks so much like you. What a good girl Noisy is. <gasps> good girl. And Green Collar Girl is 481 grams. So she's a very nice size too. And last but not least in this litter is our little purple collar girl, who's our little, we're just going to see what we think today, if she's an apricot or she's a caramel. Oh, I'm pretty sure, oh, we just have to have a little bum clean up here. Mom's quite worried about that. I'm pretty sure she's going to be an apricot because it looks to me like her feet are quite dark. And again, if we look right around her nose, hmm, can't quite tell for sure yet. Uh, so we'll leave that. It's going to be a mystery whether she's a caramel or an apricot. She's got the pretty little white feet going on, the white on the head here, sort of uh, semi-tuxedo style markings, uh, white on the chest, lots of really pretty white markings. And you can see her coloration and how dark she is, and she'll end up as well getting a little bit darker as time goes on. And Purple Collar Girls, 379 grams. So all the puppies have just done so well with their weight gains. They've really come a long ways. Their Noisette's really doing a great job taking care of them. Uh, she's a little bit agitated and excited right now because Maisie's carrying on so much. So this is a natural dog response to that where she's like, I need to find where that sound is and I need to protect my babies and make sure everything's safe. And that's what she's doing here. Uh, normally, like I said, Maisie's not like this, but she's just wondering how come we're over here and talking and how come we're not over there seeing her. So that's where we are going to go next to make our next video uh, for Maisie's litter. That's the chocolate fondue litter. And uh, maybe Noisette will be the one who's w worried about not having the attention then. So I hope you enjoyed the video today and seeing all the puppies. Uh, like I said, they're all doing so nicely. Really such a pretty little litter. I love them when they have, we have so much different color and pattern going on. And just a very excellent Mama Noisette. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah, you a good girl. That's why I go girl. Yeah, you smile. Did you smile? <laughs>